Hi, in this video we will talk about vector addition. Before we get further into talking about vector operations, it is useful to establish that we learn what these operations are good for. And the second part is to learn how to do these operations. So with each operation, we try to address these two questions. What do we need this operation for and when to use them and how to be able to do this operation using a parametric uh, design environment? Our topic today is vector addition. Adding two vectors produce a third vector. So if we add vector one plus vector two, we will get a third vector, vector three. But what does that vector mean? And how is it useful to my operation? When do I know that I need to add two vectors, for example? Let's take a simple example. Suppose my vector one equals five, zero, zero. And my vector two equals zero, five, zero. Let's try to draw those in my 3D coordinate system. Using an anchor point A, anywhere in space, I can represent my two vectors. Vector one goes into the positive x direction, five units. Vector two goes five units in the y direction. You might be intuitively able to deduce that adding two vectors will create a vector between these two vectors, V3. Now let's try to perform the addition operation. In order to add two vectors, you add their corresponding components. So vector three equals five, five, zero. Anchored to point A, the vector will look like how we drew it in the image. But when do I need to use vector addition? The first situation that we use vector addition is, is to find the average vector between two vectors. It is equivalent for an object to be placed in certain location in a space and then shifted by the first vector to the new location. And then from there, it is shifted by the second vector to the final destination. So we are applying two shifts to produce the third shift and we use vector addition to combine these two shifts. So vector addition give us the average vector that combine two vectors. If the two vectors happen to be the same length, I don't only get an average vector, I am ensured to get average direction. And in our example, we actually have two vectors that have exactly the same length, five units. So my addition vector really split the angle equally in terms of the addition vector direction. So the first angle is equal to the second angle. What happens if the two vectors have two different lengths? Let's see an example. Suppose vector one equals five, zero, and zero, and vector two equals zero, one, zero. We already know that we can calculate vector three to be equal to five, one, zero. Let's have a look at our 3D space. Let's anchor our vector to a point A. Our vector one goes five unit in the positive X direction, and vector two goes one unit in the positive Y direction. Vector three will be closer 
to vector 1, then vector 2, closer in direction. So this angle is a smaller than that angle. If you have an input of two vectors that are different in length, v1 length in this case equals 5, and v2 length equals 1, then you cannot get a vector that is that represent the average direction between the two vectors. If you care only about finding the average direction between two vectors, then you need to ensure that they have the same length before you add them. And the way to do that is usually by unitizing or taking the unit vector of the two vectors to ensure that their length is always equal and in this case equal to 1. Let's see an example in Grasshopper of vector addition. In a Grasshopper, suppose we have two vectors. Vector 1 equals 5, 0, 0 and vector 2 equals 0, 9, 0. What happens if we add these two vectors and anchor them to the same point? of vector 1 and vector 2. In order to add two vectors, grasshopper addition component is smart enough to recognize that the input is vectors and perform a vector addition operation. Let's try. We feed it vector 1 and vector 2. And the result should be a vector. And if we try to display that vector, we get the red vector, which is the addition of the two vectors. See how the red vector is leaning towards vector 1, the blue vector. And the angle between the addition vector and the blue vector is smaller than the angle between it and the black vector. That is because the length of the blue vector, vector 2, is bigger than the length of vector 1. If what I need is the average direction between the two vectors, then I will have to use the unit vector of the two input vectors before feeding it into the addition component. Let's try that. We use unit vector to unitize the first vector and another unit vector to unitize the second vector. And that will become my input to the addition. As you can see now, my red vector is pointing to the exact average direction between my two input vectors. And this is how you create an average vector using vector addition.